first thing we're gonna be going over is why I'm crazy. No, um, the first thing I'm working with is going to be just brain fart, brain fart, brain fart. Hi, I'm Jesse Lee. Welcome to Acorn Patch Art Productions first tutorial, or at least our first experimental tutorial. I'm glad that you are actually watching. I don't blame you if you don't, but at the same time, I would like to try to get this up to speed where people might actually want to watch some tutorials that I can produce. Excellent. We are ready to do this. We've got our 18 by 24 pre-prime stretched canvas. It's an expensive grade because we're practicing. Next, we've got my student grade or mid-grade titanium white and Mars black in my bulk paint bucket. This is used for underpaintings and basically when we're going to use a lot of paint and I don't want to blow the money on the expensive stuff, just say. Uh, next, we've got our wet, stay wet palette ready to rock. I've got my water buckets loaded. We've got our assortment of brushes, spritzers, and additives. We are going to be sticking to the toolkit for the most part, the one that I ran across the screen just moments ago. So next we are going to spritz our canvas. You can use your little spritzer. You can use your big spritzer. You can go bananas. Just get some water on there. Nothing major. Next. I'm going to take my nice fluffy blender brush, it's very fluffy, very fluffy indeed, and I'm going to grab some of my white, some of my slow dry, and I'm going to run a nice fine coat over the whole canvas. We're going to use that for blending as we drop in the rest of our effects, background, and details, and features, and all the good stuff that is part of the painting. So let's grab our brushes. Let's get rolling. Okay, this is a limited palette of painting. We're going to use Cad Yellow, Ultramarine Blue, and Cad Red. The brush strokes are quick, simple, no crisscrosses, just straight across. Not a whole lot of detail, not a whole lot of blending, just letting it kind of naturally blend to the white underneath, leaving our darkest blues at the white and top, and leaving a hole in the middle, which you'll see later, which will become our lake. For the mountains, we're going to keep them loose and watery, that way they seem to be perceived in the distance. I'm using the color more towards purple, that also helps perceive and produce an illusion that it's distant. For our primary mountain, we're using the palette knife. The palette knife is heavily loaded with basically a mix of blues, browns, purples, even a little black. And we just scratch it in and keep scratching it on until it looks like a mountain. Then we blend out the base, also providing a bit of uh, illusion to distance. We highlight with pure white and mixes right into the wet paint. And that gives us you know, our highlights and our texture. We're not going to spend all day. Next we take our fan brush. And we're going to use that fan brush to drop in the distance trees. A little mix of greens and blues, but allowing the blues to dominate to keep the trees in the distance. And if I have to come back over for contrast, well then we just do another coat, another layer, everything's wet into wet. Um, you just keep kind of pushing the trees till they stand out just enough to create the illusion of distant trees. We'll go over that stroke later. Then I blend out the base to provide once again a little bit of illusion, keeping it kind of misty, kind of distant. Then I'll start dropping in the shoreline of the lake. The shoreline of the lake, you just sketch it in and start to backfill. Once again, providing distant trees, sharpening up the shadows upon the lake's edge. Leave the shadows a little bit watery. Drop them down nice and easy. Don't turn them into a block of color. Start finishing up by blocking the rest of the land masses, highlighting the base of the shoreline, dropping in a couple of fixits, and then dropping in our nearest trees. Now these trees, I'm going to lay them in purple and then darken them up. 
mostly pine trees. Pine trees are a lot of fun to paint. They're relatively simple. Just takes a little practice with a fan brush. They can be done with a square or a filbert. Remember to drop in a couple of highlights and dark spots in the distance to add to texture if it doesn't seem right. And then I'm going to take that palette knife and go over the rock mass which we're going to plug in our dragon on. Now as a generic rule, one that can be broken, we usually use, or I use, the you have to have darks to have lights. So I lay in an underpainting, then the darks, then I start bringing in the lights, drawing out my highlights in form working from a dark base. It helps to create the illusion of three dimensions, texture, shadow. You can always come back in and do more glazes to fix. Now for the dragon. The dragon, I had an original drawing, a water painting. I did some sketch work. Uh, sketch work transfers right over into your painting, saves you a bit of heartache, especially if you do it on your uh, sketch pad. Kind of work it out before you try to plug it in. Uh, drawing directly transfers over to this. I mean, you don't have to be a good draw, but it certainly does help and transfers over well. I started out black and white, and then I started glazing in permanent greens. I'm also going to use Indian yellow and a lizard and crimson for shadow. This is pretty much where I'm breaking away from my palette, and I will take those colors and plug them into the highlights throughout the painting to tie in the whole painting and hopefully bring some balance to it. The dragon is just for fun, just to break from re free from the usual landscape scene. Working in glazes is real simple. You just let a glaze dry and then bring in another and keep bringing them in. You can work wet into wet for this and it'll blend out nicely. I started with a light green, I mean a dark green, and then I worked into my light permanent green. I use the blue for the tongue and for the highlights and some of the claws, just trying to develop some texture and depth. I use the limbs and crimson to basically produce the shadow in three-dimensional form. Also a little touch of hooker's green rather than straight black. Straight black can come off real flat if you overuse it, so it's good to try to plug in most of your color palette before you go right for the black. Black is more of your last ditch effort to darken something up. And for today's closer look, let's take a look at our fan brush and fan brush trees. So how did we make those fan brush trees, the ones that are in the distance, that don't quite need a lot of detail. Well, we take our little friend, the fan brush, and we load it up with our desired paint. It's all right if you have a mixture of colors and goodies, maybe a color on one side, maybe you have yellow on this side, and blue on that. And you let them mix run on the canvas and just let the little oddities that pop out suggests that there's details. So, I'm going to take my good old-fashioned palette, take Mr. Fan Brush, and pull down some color. Load it right onto one side, right until it starts to chisel. And look just about like that. So, keep pulling down my color. That side's good. Now I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to come over here and start grabbing some green. It's already starting to mix into something delicious. There we go, look at that. Mmm, all right, yummy. Then, we take Mr. Fan Brush and we are going to dot him onto the canvas in a manner that's straight on, straight at the canvas. So I'm gonna hit the canvas, boop, and flick up lightly. If you don't make the sound effects, it won't make the magic happen. So, then I just work in a line, dot, up, dot, up. And it's alright if the base gets a little bit muddied. Where you want the white and other colors to bleed through, creating contrast, is up at the top. But let all these little dots of yellow, green, and blue, let them just come out and do their own thing. 
and it'll create and suggest just a wee bit of detail. And that's it. Thanks again for watching. I'm Jesse Lee. This was nothing special, just trying to share a little bit of stoke and creativity for art. So hopefully we can produce some other fun videos and maybe they'll get better over time.